Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today's project, I'm working on this glorious um, bow-fronted sideboard. Now, I picked this up um, quite some time ago on a local selling site for £60. It was a great buy. It's not an antique, it's kind of a, a reproduction veneered piece. Some of the veneers quite damaged in areas, and there's also many parts of the trim hanging off in certain areas, which I haven't managed to find any trim that matches it. So that's a key to what you're gonna see in this first half of a tutorial. I'm gonna split it into two halves, maybe three. Um, the first half, this tutorial, will be all about preparation and adding some wood U-bend moldings to the surface of this piece of furniture to radically change its whole look and appearance. So let's take a closer look at the actual piece of furniture. So let's start looking at some of the veneer and handles. Um, some of these are paint flicks. They're not from me, it was from the previous. I think it was, like I said, just stored in a garage or outside space. The veneer you can see here, it's kind of split. It's kind of raised a little bit. I think the damp's got definitely in. You can see more so on this area. It would have been once beautiful. Um, nevertheless, it's now not so good. You can see wear and tear on the feet, worn away. Um, this is the trim that I was just speaking about. It's gone, there's a section gone there. Although I have, somebody was good to kind of save some of the trim and pop, pop it in the drawers when it obviously broke off. There's a whole nother full section right the way down that drawer. Um, and I have only got one side. So I wouldn't have enough to do both sides, which is a shame. Um, but I have been working on a solution in my mind on what to do. I'm not keen on the handles. Very Victorian um, brass handles. I kind of feel like they do fit the space with the veneered panels. It kind of works in that space. If we look at this drawer, that whole space, it kind of narrows the space down. And that's something I've been thinking about when prepping this piece. So I do want to keep some of these panels. So on this side, I'm not so keen on this half. I think that's too deep. I think I'm gonna square the panels off and put trim in a square on the cupboard door and the drawer. Also the same on this side. And then we're gonna do something a little different to the drawers to change the whole look of this. So I'm gonna show you some of the wood U-bend trims that I've been looking at and the handles that I'm gonna change on this piece. Okay guys, stick with me for a moment. Lots of talking again, but I just wanna take you through my mindset on what I'm choosing for this piece of furniture. So um, all of the trim on the drawers, all of these drawers have a little trim on the edge. They're not flush. Um, this little beading that goes around, it's um, around every section, including the cupboards, which I am missing the sections along the full length of that cupboard and half of this cupboard. But I'm gonna strip down the drawers of that trim. Um, it will create a few anomalies, which we'll talk about as I'm going through the process um, as we do this. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take them off and replace the two ends. And also what it will do is, because it was so hard to find anything in the hardware store that's like this trim, I will store this away, probably with my um, haul of wood U-bends um, for fixes on this style of furniture. In the UK, we have lots of this style of furniture reproduction. So I'm gonna take them off and I've decided to create the middle bank of drawers. I'm gonna create a very different look. I'm gonna create an oval across all of the drawers. So that's why we're stripping off the trim. I don't want the cross members going across. We cannot help the, I think this is called a stringer, I'm not sure, somebody might correct me. But the, the bit that sits in between the drawers, we cannot change that, it's got to be there. Um, one anomaly is the drawer sits further back 
um, than the, I'm going to call it a stringer, I don't know what it's called, than the stringer that sits between, but we're going to have to level that up. I'll show you useful techniques about that once we stripped it off. And also, I'm going to change the handles. I'm going for a round. Um, this is an iron eBay purchase. It's kind of got a bit of gil uh, gold on there. It's quite cute, but much smaller. And they're going to sit in the center. Now, the two side drawers, it will, if I don't put any trim on there, it will kind of look lost because these have got big back plates. So it's about balance, but I am going to put a trim on there, but I'm not going to do that quarter crescent. I'm just going to follow that line and use a smaller trim, which I think we're going to go with this one. Um, it's like a leaf pattern. It's quite small. And this is R2, uh, sorry, R722. If anybody's looking for a, um, a would you bend, if you want to go through my affiliate link, it's in the comment section below. Um, and also, I'm going to use that probably around the square, the whole square of these drills, I think, across the stringer, right the way around, and make a very square panel, which will then give me this blank canvas for what I'm going to do is this oval. So I'm going to put something decorative at the top. I think this one, which is 1385, comes as a pair. Um, I'm going to pop that one in the middle and then we're going to take one of the wider trims. I think this is going to be my choice and this one is um, R705. I think I'm going to go for this and it's kind of got a little leaf pattern but it's kind of got a groove. Quite simple and I'm going to tuck it underneath here and create this oval. We're going to create an oval across all of the drawers and then we're going to cut through each section of the drawer so it can all open and close perfectly. Wish me luck. Um, I've not done this before. I've seen it being done and I know that it will work, um, but it's all about proportion and balance. Um, I want to get this right. I'm going to be putting a lot of trims on this. And like I said, it is for me. And I don't like overly fussy, but I want to kind of make it look unfussy with paint. Um, also, I've got to show you these. Now, I'm really sorry. I'm going to show you something that's probably not available anymore. This was a, another Would You Bend, which has been discontinued. I'm, I'm told it might come back. So I can't give you any codes because I literally ripped it off, um, um, off the staging that it was on at headquarters um, when I went to visit Solly Joe at Would You Bend. And I said, I love that, I love that, I need it in my life. Um, and I got a pair of these. One is missing a little thing on the end, but I'm gonna chop that off. And these are gonna sit, hopefully, on the sides of this piece because it goes off on an angle. They don't quite fit, but I'm gonna make them fit because that's what these things do. So, without further ado, let's start stripping the handles, filling the holes, stripping the trim, and get stuck into this project. Thank you if you're still here and you've not got fed up with me talking. So that's all of the trim removed from the center bank of drawers in the sideboard. There's four drawers, there's one still in down there. Um, the trim came off absolutely beautifully. I've got some really nice long lengths, which was what I was looking for to replace the cupboard drawers. 
or cupboard doors on this piece. Um, there's a full length missing on one and a half on another. I'm not removing off the two drawers above that. That's staying with the cupboard. Um, one thing that I would say about the trim, it did come off really lovely, nice and easy. Um, but what it did leave behind was per drawer about 25 little pins that were my nemesis. They just took forever to come out. I even brought reinforcements. I brought Mr. M in and they were just a nightmare. We tried everything from hammering them home to try and sink them back into the wood, but that just bent the pin. They were so fine, so fine. I think they were driven in by a power tool. Uh, and the best way, if you're gonna do this, the best way that I could advise you to do is pincer them and just wiggle fran frantically until they snap away from the surface without damaging the timber. And it works perfectly fine, but it just took so long. Another arduous task to renovating furniture. Anyway, at this stage, I'm gonna move on to cleaning up the drawer fronts, sanding them, and we'll get stuck in with some trim, fixing the trim on the doors, and then we'll start with the wood you bend trim. So here we are with another problem solving issue. So once my wood you bends are on here, I want a really smooth finish from the drawer to what I'm gonna call the stringer. I don't know what it's called. I'm calling it a stringer because it strings between the drawers. It's a made up term. But um, answers on a postcard, if anybody knows what this part of a piece of furniture is called, I'm calling it stringer. Right, so Initially, what I thought once I'd removed the trims was that I would pack out the drawer stay on the inside to bring the drawer out so it kind of, the bit that we've lost would bring it level with the stringer. But let me show you inside. This is a British made piece of furniture, I'm presuming, or European, European. So this is what I came up with, a little matchstick in front of the drawer stay. Rather than removing this, it's nice and firm and glue that into place, which would have made the drawer slightly more protruded on each side. But I tried, um, tried that out, popped the drawers back in, and there was another anomaly. So, what I didn't realise was, once the trim was off, that actually this end of the drawer and that end of the drawer are almost level with the stringer. Um, so, it's not there and there that need packing out because if you look, there's almost there a matchstick length that is level to come off here. So what I thought to do is, I'm gonna take a blade, I'm gonna mark out along here, right close up of this stringer and I'm gonna take the drawers out and I'm gonna sand this away. This is solid wood, so I'm gonna sand this section away in the middle so we get flushness all the way through. I'm gonna do it across all of the drawers. So hopefully this is level, this is level, and then we'll have a nice clean surface to do all of our Would You Bend new design on the front. So wish me luck. Okay guys, I've got the piece of furniture back indoors and it's all sanded away. It's nice and smooth. I'm really happy with that. It's gonna work perfectly. But I'm onto the fix of this trim. So I've decided to measure this 
piece out that we need to cut, so I'm gonna use a blade just to mark out the new area. So I'm gonna push, that's already cut on a 45 degree angle here. I'm gonna push that into there. A little bit of destination work, line it up. That's where it's gonna go. Into the corner. Just try to mark it out. And then I'm gonna take this away and I'm gonna cut straight through that little mark and it should fit nicely just there. So here we go, straight back in, let's see if this fits. Yeah, it wants to be nice and tight. And we're gonna glue that into place and probably, I'm not gonna put the pins through this, I'm gonna glue it with quick and thick um, tight bond, the same glue that I would be using for uh, the wood you bend, and I'm gonna clamp it, I think, just to hold this down. So I'm now going to tackle the um, corbels that are going to sit on this funny angle on the corner. Uh, like I said before, it, it sits lovely and flat on this surface, but there is areas of this wood you bend that I need to wrap around this corner and the under corner. There's just little, like these extra bits at the top, they stick out and there's a gap between each one of these leaves and the wider sections of the wood you bend. So what I'm gonna now do is mark out on the underside where the flat section is here, so I know on the back part of here, I'm gonna take out a groove, um, a straight line into it, I'm gonna warm it up and then cut into it, take some material away so it makes it easier to fold round the corner, if that makes sense. Because if I try and heat this up and bend it round, what will happen, the front surface, will, it'll cause more strain, it might um, split into two, but if you take away the material behind, you can then bend it a little bit more. So that's what I'm working on. I'm just working out where the placement is, centrally to that. Um, and I know that I want this edge to be flat with there, so I'm gonna work um, and I know that that leaf on the back is where I want it to be. So I can work out from here, straight down, I can do this. It is a bit of a guesstimation, but I know from where things are placed on the back, it's not much that has to wrap around the corner. So that's one can we see? That's one area. So I'm going to cut neatly into there and then take a small amount of material out. So more up here than here. These are quite thin, but up here it's quite thick. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I know that it goes to from there to there. So from that area down to there. It is kind of a bit of guesstimation. You could spend more time um, making sure that you had exact measurements, but these are dead forgiving. Once they're on, they'll be on. So I don't know if you can see that. That's what I'm kind of, I'm gonna heat all of this up now. Um, you can pop these on a griddle. I am actually, don't tell Mr. M, the stove here has got a, a warming plate, which is for keeping things warm. So I'm gonna leave them on there while I work on one, and then I'm gonna use jet, jet them away from the stove with my heat gun. So um, you can use a sausage griddle, the same thing. I'm sure you all have seen how these work, but I'm just kind of utilizing the kitchen appliances. Don't tell Mr. M, I will clean them. Um, we don't ever use it anyway, we only warm plates on it. 
So, hopefully, wish me luck, I will get you some close-up shots as I'm applying this to the surface. Okay, it turns out that it took quite a lot of gouging out. So we've got quite deep crevices. Um, I have started bending. I've also got a few little cracks that are repairing on the front from the stress of how much it's got to bend. But I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got loads of little pieces that I've gouged out that I'm gonna use as um, a way of fixing this. I will glue this back together but it's gonna be what looks like a relic. So a few cracks in the moldings, for me, doesn't matter. I want it to look like it's got age, but that's basically what I've driven out of the piece. You can see just how much, there's the stress crack. Um, these are first generation wood U-bend moldings. They're, the new ones, the what you're gonna see me use later, are much better. So I am working with something that has changed over time. So. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to get these nice and hot and just bend them around. Anything that doesn't meet on the back, that doesn't meet on that bend, I'm going to try and use pieces of the material that came out as a way of fixing that and sanding it smooth so it all sits nicely around the corner. lots of glue on here and this is super hot. I've got my oven mitt with me just in case I need to put a lot of pressure on. You can see the glue is steaming so get this on. I'm just going to go for it. Crack it into place. Yeah, kind of centralise it. Got lots of glue. Yeah, that's lovely. So, I might ask her to call Mr. M in to give me a hand here, I think. Who knows? I'm just going to keep on pushing, pushing it around that corner. I'll probably, I'll focus on that and reheat that because that's a thinner section. So I'll concentrate on the top. Lots of pressure. Those big leaves and those like that. Mr. M, Woo! can you come and give me a hand? You need three hands. Come and give me your hands. He's a bit shy of the camera. Come around here. It's close up anyway, so you won't see too much of you. Right, I want you to kind of keep pressing there and there so I can focus on other places. Yeah, you know, that's square. Right, that's good. I want that. Right. Can you push on those two as well? Mm -hmm. I might need your hand out of the way a little bit. That's it. Right, I'm not going to worry about this end because I can come back to the end, but I'm more worried about these leaves that need to wrap around this corner. That leaf I'm not worried about, not too much because I can fill the back of it. You cannot see too much on the camera, I'm so sorry, but it does take a lot of pressure for something like this. It will be good. Let me grab my little brush underneath here. Now we're looking to clean up. Right, I want you to switch to this side, Mr. M. So I can 
can keep on working and knowing. I'm going to clean my brush. Corbel number two, this one has got a stress fracture here. I'm not worrying about that side so much. It's round the bend. We're gonna concentrate on the front edge. While it's still really hot, plenty of glue over the whole thing. We need lots of glue in the crevices, on the leaves, everywhere. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Kind of on there, it will all squish out. We know what happens, it just squishes everywhere. I've got Mr. M here again to quickly help me with this. Let's go, let's place, wiggle it around. We're concentrating on that being centralized and this side being down, these two leaves being down. You hold that free, let me clean my fingers up. So now I am moving on to this oval section with the Would You Bend moulding trim and this gorgeous little motif that's going to sit at the top here. Um, so how do I get the perfect oval? This is all trial and error. You can make an oval by banging two nails in and a loop of string and creating the perfect oval. 
but I think this is going to be kind of a, a bit elongated, so I'm going to do it a very different way. I've got some sheets of wallpaper, which I've cut to the perfect size of the door. It fits from top to bottom perfectly and side to side. I've halved it, so I've folded in half, and that's where I'm at at the moment. Also, I used a straight edge and centralised from there to there, and I've marked out right the way through the centre, so I can see where my centre of the drawers are. So then I'm going to use the paper to the central line. The fold is in the cent central, central line. The would you bend, I'm going to place where I want that to be. Now, I'm kind of placing it very central because I might add a trim around the edge. So I don't want it to be too, too close. Uh, and I know that I probably want the trims to start from these little round, there's little round edges on the bottom. I'll do a close up. Uh, and then I'm going to work, there's four drawers, and back to that word stringer, I'm going to work to the middle stringer because I know that's central, so I can equally fold again to that section. I know that that will be the middle, and it is. So we're going to work in quarters. It's a bit like making a paper cutout snowflake. So I have now got, I'll fold it the other way so it's easy to work with. I have now got my central line. So what I'm going to do is mark out from where the would you bend I want it to be, giving myself a the same gap here and here then. So we can do an arc and then we're gonna cut this out freehand and open it up to see what kind of oval we've got and we can then play around with it. Here's my moulding. So I'm gonna try and connect this oval probably from this section. I'm gonna lay this out centrally to the paper. I also i am using the existing lines on here to centralise that so I know that there's a nice gap between the top and the edge in case we do put the little trim around the edge. So centralized, which kind of gives me a, if I'm going underneath there, I'm gonna make a mark. There's the top. Um, it will, if it was a true oval, it would come probably level with there. So I'm gonna still go with that true oval, kind of, it wants to be, when it meets the edges of course it wants to be kind of square this oval so it connects if it's too steep of an angle it won't flow so on the other corner keep it level we might have a trim which will sit here that's the length of the trim the same distance which i'm guesstimating is about an inch trim about an inch this is where it kind of wants to come in so that is where we're gonna go. We're gonna rock and roll with that and we're gonna just kind of try and give a nice sweeping curve, like so. So it wants to connect straight in there. And I'm gonna go with that and I'm gonna cut, cut this out. If it doesn't work first time, I'll try again. But that feels kind of right. So let's get this cut out. Okay guys, I've got my wood you bend trims on the griddle. Uh, the motif is warming up as we speak. I've got to do two things at this point. I've got to work out where the motif is gonna sit with the trim. The trim's gonna sit on the inner part of my marked line that I've made. Um, but where the two connect, the trim's got, the top trim's got to be, or the motif at the top has got to be centralized 
and then it connects in. I've already preempted the cut around the trim to make my life, life a lot easier at this stage. So how I'm gonna tackle this, I'm gonna actually put glue um, on the surface of the drawers um, where the trim is gonna go. And I'm only gonna do halfway because I want the trim to match both ways round. So I've left a little bit before the pattern starts, uh, a little bit of naked trim, and then the pattern will hit. So whatever happens, it will match at the top and the bottom. I hope that makes sense. So let's get stuck in with the glue. And I'm just gonna put a healthy amount along this line because I know once it squishes down, it'll all squish out and I can fix that. Um, along that line, that's where we're at. And I'm gonna go grab the motif, it's, it needs to bend. So we're gonna pop that on first and then we're gonna connect in the other trim. We can always eat, heat it up with the hot air gun afterwards, but it's better to keep it all in its roll while it's still hot. So we're gonna go with the, here's the motif. We're gonna apply lots of glue to this, make sure there's good surface area coverage. Uh, I'm not going to squish it down too hard straight away because I've got to connect in the trim as well. So that is going somewhere. I know that I want to connect underneath those rounds. So I am going to go like that. That feels pretty good. Wiggle it around. I can still see my line. And then I've got this, like I said, pre-cut on this edge which will connect into there. So we're gonna unravel quick and lay this out. I'm gonna just quickly snap that off because I know that there's gonna be enough. Topple it that way. It's gonna be fiddly. I know it will be fiddly. So down, down, all the way. And I'm gonna push, and I will have to reheat this. I know that I will have to reheat this, but I need to find that line and move it around. Where's my little line? There it is. So when you're working with your would you bend mouldings, don't panic, you do have a little wriggle room. You can see me here removing the top embellishment, making a few more finer detailed cuts. I'm reheating the trim to make sure it is definitely in the position that I want. Generally, would you bend mouldings tend to um, cool down as quick as they heat up. So trims, do cool down a little bit quicker than larger pieces. Here I am adding the next trim. I'm making cuts to fit round the top of the top embellishment and um, reheating ready for application the other way around. You'll see me placing this trim on and peeling it back. I do actually make a mistake, well, what I think is a mistake in the pattern thinking I've laid it on upside down, but once I removed it and popped it the other way around, it didn't make any difference. It's just one of those patterns that is probably the wrong way each way that you place it, but nevertheless, it still looks great. And I'm connecting in at the bottom and I've got the same amount of dead space between the leaves on this trim. Also, as the would you bend is cooling down, you will need to keep on applying pressure. You will want to see um, a residue of glue squishing out of the edges. You will also see me using a paintbrush here. This is just a dampened paintbrush, just to mop up any extra glue for a tidier project, which will help when we move on to the paint over this lovely piece.
Now I'm taking my blade and cutting through each connection of each drawer, um, slightly heating up the wood you bend molding again so I can cut through nice and easily. This will free up every drawer so they can slide in and out again. We will tidy up the edges with some sandpaper in a little while. So as you've just seen, it took quite a long while to lay out all of the wood you beds and get them on. Um, all that's left to do now with the prep work is a couple of things. One is to remove the drawers, because let's get these out. You can see they'll be, not, they'll be tight because of the extra trims that are around the edge of the drawers. And all I'm gonna do is, as you can see there on the edge, I'm gonna sand everything that hangs over on each one of these um, drawers, we're gonna sand that smooth, the wood you bend smooth, just to give it some freedom. We don't want the drawer catching on the trim and pinging off. You need to get it as level as possible with the drawer. So I'm gonna take my time and go across all of these trims and on the stringers. Again, answers on a postcard. I don't know what they're called. But we're just going to smooth them off. More so on here, these need to be really level because there's such a small amount. We do not want these um, bouncing off with the opening and shutting of a door. So again, it's another one of those things. Just take your time, get this really, really level and smooth. Don't forget, I'm going to be putting paint on in here as well. So we don't want um, build up of paint and it catching. You can just soften. Just slightly soften, but not too much, otherwise it's gonna look a little bit strange. You want it to be really sheer. The other thing that I'm gonna do is also on the core ball, um, obviously bits didn't quite bend round the corners, so I'm gonna soften, take some time and soften those edges on the core ball, some of these leaves, but they're great as they are. They look really lovely. And probably this round at the bottom, just here, just take the edge off that just so it looks purposely carved back on itself and the last thing that i will do with that is i'm going to fill it with some decorators cork so it will be seamless once it's painted
So that's just about it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on today's tutorial. If you've enjoyed watching me recreate the whole look using Would You Bends on this piece of furniture, please don't forget to hit the subscribe and notifications bell on my channel. Also, if you fancy seeing the second half of this, I will link it into the description box below. Thank you, take care, happy painting.